Hi everyone, welcome to Pragati Vichar Poetry Festival. So welcome Seema ma'am, welcome Mahua ma'am. So Thank today you. we all are gathered here for the Pragati Vichar Poetry Festival that we organize for, you know, on the occasion of World Poetry Day. So it's it's through this event we are, you know, paying reverence to the poetry and the, you know, uh, bringing out the, you know, nostalgia feeling for the poetry that has been losing. But I don't think so that it's losing its charm, but it's, yeah, growing day after day. So, so it's just a, you know, a tribute to all the poetry bards and their work and the literary world. So, yeah. So today we have Seema Jain ma'am and Mahua Singh ma'am. So welcome and I'm so Thank glad you. to have you, both of you on board today. It's an honor for us. Yeah. Thanks. It's a you. pleasure and honor for us too. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Josna, for having us on board here. Okay, so let's just start with the introduction. So first, Mahua Singh, mm -hmm. a recipient of the prestigious Rural International Poetry Prize. Mahua Singh is a poet based out of the Hyderabad. Her work has been published in numerous international and national anthologies, e-zines and newspapers. Mahua Sen has published a poetry anthology named Insights under the flagship of the author press. Mahua has also edited and compiled a book named Flock, The Journey Published by the Raindrops. She is a recipient of the Grand Queen's Leadership Award 2021, Poises Award for the Excellence in Literature, Distinguished Poet Award in the 10th Rabindranath Tagore International Poetry Contest, Wordsmith Award 2020 by the Asian Literary Society, Women Power Summit and Awards 2021, Bharati Sapurti Ratna Award for Literature, and many prestigious awards. She is working currently with BEO, Bulls Eye Outsourcing, as a regional director. So welcome, ma'am. Welcome, Mahua, ma'am. Thank you so and much. Thanks a lot for having me here. to have you. And I just read your profile. Yeah, it's, an impressive profile, yeah, impressive, Mahua. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Congratulations. Thank you so, much. so second co-panelist, co we have Seema Jain. Seema Jain is a bilingual poet, short story writer, translator, and editor who have been associated professor and HOD English at KMV Jalandar. She has published five books of English and Hindi poems, translation of poems, two edited, two edited books, and has contributed more than uh, 60 anthologies. She is a recipient of the awards from Purwathas Hindi Sahitya Academy, Punjab Kala Sahitya Academy, and the Masters of Creative Pulse Award from the Philosophy Poetica. Her poems and short stories have been widely published, translated, anthologized, and recited. So, um, so yeah, Thank so you. yeah, so happy to have uh, on. We are so happy to have you, Thank Seema you, ma'am. Welcome. Yeah. So let's just start with the poetry recitation. So first, uh, Mahoma ma'am. So could you please recite your poetry and also uh, just tell audience that your interest and your poetry, yeah. Yeah, of course. I'll start with a poem that I had written for Holi since tomorrow we are celebrating Holi. So I think uh, I should read a poem that I had written on that theme. So first okay. of all, let me read my poem and then we can come back and, uh, you know, talk about it. So okay. it is called Colors. Okay. I'm sure Seema ma'am has read this poem. So this okay. is called Colors. Colors slide in through the aperture of a window and sits on her lap like a weary child, gravitating her to the calcified memories of periwinkle days, now a lifetime away. That slice of antiquated time that she has preserved in the safest safe of her soul, she visualizes the yellow stained mustard swaying to the aulian wind beside the crooning brook, the rustle of greens in a rhythmic cadence, occasionally taking a hiatus on the ivory white of her frilled frock. The Pichkari missiles during Holi and her siblings' friendly banter, adding a piquancy into the milieu. The confetti of green and red and the pink gulal thrown into the air, a prelude to merrymaking dazzles in front of her soused eyes. An effervescent mixture of emotional hues, of smiles and agony and bliss 
overlapping violet sheets of expectations and fulfillment lived in harmony. Befriending the sun and the shades, summer and winter, she celebrated the spring. Now, the red fragments of real self is lost in a hunger to touch the perfection. An everyday masquerade of what is not lurks behind her shoulders, sinking into the labyrinth of gray mundane, flaunting a synthetic smile I see life fleeting by. Tonight, subtle mumbles, mum murmurs speak of a crimson awakening. Tonight, subtle murmurs speak of a crimson awakening, an epiphany to arrange the lost fragments, stitching and refurbishing tattered silhouette with colorful applique. A fuchsia dawn arrives after every ashen night. She welcomes new ambassadors of the morn and internalizes the all-encompassing craze. She tries to touch the darkness with her pinky finger. She tries to touch the darkness with her pinky finger to check the tenebrosity, to customize her space, perhaps. And the vicious circle goes on, learning, unlearning, and relearning. Spring, a doppelhanger of hope, arrives with ulutation. Conch blows in in the temple of her soul. Now she flaunts a color sodden white sari, soaked in blues, greens, yellows, and pinks. Her avarice for life reverberates. She sways to the tunes of Ori Grihobashi, Kol Dar Kol, Lag Lojetol. Open your eyes, the home dweller. Everything is honest. Swing. So that That's was a beautiful the... poem, Bahua. Thank you. Beautiful. So, so beautifully written. <laughs> Thank it you. Bathes so you in the colors of holy, spring, hope, and so on, radiance. You know, Thank beautiful you so poem. Much. Thanks, ma'am. Thank, Thank you so much, Mama, ma'am. It was a Thanks. beautiful poem. You know, even I was feeling the, you know, each each word when when you were, yes. you know. Yeah, reciting your poetry. It's Thank amazing. You. It's very Thank impressive. You for your kind yeah. words, Jyotsna. Thank you. So I think writing is synonymous with breathing for me, you know. Yes. It's, uh, wow. say, that's the tranquilizing sojourn I don't want to return from. <laughs> so I feel it's cathartic. Writing is cathartic. Is. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, that reminds me of Maya Angelou. Uh, she said there's a greater ag agony than bearing an untold story inside you. So you know, I kind of find peace in expressing my deep-rooted sensitivities yeah. and emotions through words. I absolutely agree with you, Mahua. I think it, it was Pablo Neruda who said that writing for me is like breathing. Okay. And just as I can't live without breathing, I can't live without writing. Yes, so yes. Absolutely correct. I think for a poet, writing is akin to breathing. It's absolutely. akin to life. Absolutely, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you so much, both of you, in coming, joining us today. And, you know, the session is all about emotion. And I'm, you know, feeling the flush of emotion right now. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. So, Mama, ma'am, could you please just uh, recite one more poetry? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Or I'll give uh, uh, Masima, ma'am, a chance to read. In the meanwhile, I'll just search my poem. Yeah, okay. So, okay. Uh, Seema, ma'am, please. Yeah, sure. I would like to recite... Uh, one of my poems that I had written some time back. It is titled Mystery. Mystery. Okay. So here it is. From birth to death, each step of life is shrouded in mystery. Like a long winding road on a winter morning misty. But as we advance along the road farther and farther, step by step, the path becomes visible and sufficiently clearer. Like travelers on a misty moon, we go forth walking through life with so many riddles baffling us at every step of this mystery ride. The small child wonders, who painted the sky or the ocean blue? Why don't the fish fly or the birds swim? Or where from come drops of dew? Who plants seeds under the soil 
that sprout and grow into huge trees? Who tells the sun when to rise or set? And what makes the raindrops freeze? Growing up clears some of these mysteries, only to bring some more. Like who controls birth and death? And whither goes the soul? Why do some people roll in luxuries and some struggle to make both ends meet? Why did we create such weird systems that humans hate, loot, and cheat? Why do we have wars, conflicts, enmities between peoples and countries? Why can't we live in love, peace, and harmony? Does happiness lie in riches, power, and wealth? Or is it to be found in simple things, in exploration of the self? This whole life is a journey from one mystery to another that keep unfolding in umpteen ways till to final sleep we surrender, till to final sleep we surrender. So that was mystery. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. You know, I honestly, I wanted to close my eyes and feel each word of the poem, but I just <laughs> cannot you. close my eyes. And yeah, thank you so much, Jyotsna. Thank you. It's amazing. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah. So, let's get back to Mahua, ma'am. So, yeah. Share. Yeah, I'll, so, uh, I just found a poem. It is called Charulata. It's uh, the character's name is Charulata. The poem I had written on her. It okay. is based, uh, there's a story, short story based on uh, Rabindranath's uh, short yeah. story. Actually. Right, right. The name of the story, right. Noshtonir in Bengal, which has been translated. It's a beautiful story, Mahua. I have read it. And so I just, give a small uh, glimpse of the story so it's easier mm -hmm. for the viewers or for Josna to, uh, you know, connect, yeah, with, yeah, connect with it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, in this, this is called uh, the broken nest or the Nostonir in Bengali. So uh, this, uh, uh, there's a girl called Charulata who is married to Bhupati, a newspaper reporter who is very busy and who doesn't have much time for uh, his wife. And uh, uh, Bhupati's uh, uh, brother visits uh, Charulata and eventually they connect with each other on many uh, realms, you know, because he is also very passionate about poetry and both of them fall in love with each other. But okay. eventually, Amol, uh, the name of uh, Pupati's uh, brother is Amol. And eventually, he realizes that after all, he's my uh, brother's wife. And I shouldn't be, I, I should be off this. And he leaves. So Charulata loved her, him a lot. And uh, I tried to, you know, uh, bring out the emotions of Charulata through this poem. Yeah. So this is called Charulata. You had lulled the vast expanse of water in my mind, ironing out the distorted ripples that ruined its aesthetics. Perturbed was my ashen sky for things beyond my periphery. But you had calmed my sky, bringing ineffable peace and beauty by the symphony of your tranquil voice. You had transmuted my world into a languorous and breezy autumn evening. Today, shadow encapsulates the milky glimmer of my wrinkled, pallid sky as you left me, taking a part of me with you. Breeze still teases my cheeks and plants a hickey on the back of my nape, failing to bring back the blush on the pale of my face. For now, the breeze sends me haunting shivers, twinning with the hostile air of the world that I dwell in. Dear Amul, why did you plant music on my lips when you had to snatch the lyrics away? It was all planned, isn't it? I should have known the day you had sold the song to the world that was meant only for me. So here the story, she, he used to write poems for her, okay? So one fine day, he sold one of the poems which really did hurt Charulata to the core. So uh, that is what I try to capture here. I should have known the day you had sold the song to the world that was meant only for me. 
love had made me blind, subjugated, helpless, and compelled. All I could see was visual sky in the depth of your eyes that spoke a million words in the silence between the flicker of your eyes. I fight to catch a breath as I climb the ladder of sustenance without you. Through the red stained dark night, I sit near my window and see the vagabond clouds moving somewhere or nowhere. Thank you. Beautiful, well. yeah. Beautiful Mahua. How well you have captured the emotions of Charulata and the whole situation and its pathos. It's really amazing. Thanks a lot, ma'am. And I must say that I felt resonated with your poem. And mm. it was amazing. I'm so yeah. glad that you could. And the way the the way you recited your poetry, right? It's very you know enchanting. You know, yes. I was just lost. The that fluency with which like, you recite it, it is yeah. really captivating. Thank yes, you so much, ma'am. Yeah. Means a lot to me. Thank you. So thank you so much, Mahua Singh, ma'am. So see, ma'am. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to share another poem of mine. Uh, this poem is actually based on a famous poem by Robert Browning. Uh, so, Mahua, we are really basing our poems, you know. We are yeah. reciting our poems based on some other story or poem. Yeah. So, but then... uh, yeah, Browning's poem, My Last Duchess. Yes. Uh, uh, I think you all must, yes. Mahua must be familiar with it. And okay. uh, for Jyotsna, I can, or for the viewers, I can briefly, you know, tell something about the poem. So in the in Browning's poem, My Last Duchess, there is a duke, uh, an Italian duke, mm -hmm. who is very proud and haughty of his 9,000-year-old nine, 9, family name. And his duchess, his wife, he, she is a very simple, innocent, and beautiful lady. And uh, she, the, the, the duke doesn't like her uh, frank behavior with others, her smiling to anybody. And uh, things grow on, go on, and... Finally, the duke uh, gives commands and the duchess is killed. Yes. You know, just because she smiles at anybody, mm -hmm. uh, she is killed. So this is a very uh, touching uh, poem and story. And uh, I have tried to rewrite this poem from the point of view of the duchess. Okay, duchess. Mm -hmm. okay. The poem is written from the duke's point of view by Browning. But I have tried to write it from the duchess. point of view of the duchess. You know, wow. How she must have felt. And what must be her perspective on things? Okay, so it is titled, Why My Lord? The Duchess to the Duke says, Why My Lord? And this is how the poem goes. With dreams in my eyes and roses in my cheeks, with smiles on my lips and hopes of true love in my heart, I tied the wedding knot with you, my Lord, and entered into my new life. But little did I know then, I wasn't marrying the love of my life, but a 900-year-old family name of yours. Oh, how I wish I had known. I was stepping into a golden cage. You didn't like my smiles, my blush, to anyone except your high lordship. You didn't like my extending thanks to each and every officious fool. But all this I learned only much later when your guards were all set to execute the given commands. Poor men, you should have seen their faces then. Incredulous of my designated fate, aghast mm -hmm. at my so-called crime and punishment, praying to God to forgive them. My Lord, had you been man enough, you could have at least talked to me. But then, for that, you needed to regard me as a human being and not a mere artifact. I hope my lifelike painting, the same as was done by Fra Pandolf, still adorns your palace wall. Because I'm sure 
it doesn't bother you with the nuisance of its indiscreet smiles and of course you can even proudly flaunt it in front of special visitors as part of your exquisite art gallery adieu my lord adieu i'm sure one day justice will prevail and posterity will judge you for your true avail posterity will judge you for your true avail this was Beautiful. my poem by my lord very amazing rendered this reminds me of porphyria's lover by browning yes, yes. there are uh, these both these poems are actually you know there is a lot many questions very, in very front of uh, in the minds of readers exactly. and especially you know from a feminist point of view they True. really uh, challenge you to think otherwise and to think absolutely. from a different perspective you know absolutely this poem uh, the idea to write this poem it came to me in my classroom when i was oh, teaching yeah. my last duchess and suddenly you know while teaching that poem and giving different interpretations to the students i suddenly said that somebody should write a poem about uh, this whole situation from the duchess's point of view very and that very day in the evening when i came back home the poem was written oh so wow that is how it happened you know? yeah thank you seema ma'am it was a very good poem and i really liked it yeah thank i'm you. hoping that also the readers also loved it yeah thank you okay yeah, sure yeah so before going ahead to our you know question around our discussion so it's all about emotion we have been talking about emo- emotion right mm-hmm. so this session topic it's about feelings and emotion that feelings are something you have not something you are do you agree okay so this is our topic for today's session and my first question quoted by shannon al elder feelings are something you have not something you are what are your thoughts on this so uh, mom was saying ma'am what do you take on this well i feel um, you know feelings are supposed to be experienced for short period of time if you will kind of touch something hot you quickly remove your hand without many minutes uh, you are no longer feeling the same so feelings are caused by external stimuli so feeling cannot define a person's whole gamut of personality even emotions for that matter are often said to be long term states if uh, suppose uh, you are in love for example uh, that emotion will usually last for years because emotions are internal but again it cannot uh, define someone in totality a person's entire personality you know so to say so a uh, personality is the whole spectrum of an individual from uh, from a general point of view it includes a person's uh, you know physical psychological uh, you know emotional aspects and um, it originates within the individual and remains fairly consistent throughout life and um, it also exhibits distinctive qualities of a person right and, uh, yeah so it is uh, you know the supreme realization of the innate uh, idiosyncrasy of a living being so yes feelings or emotions are just one of the components i would say it is something one has not something one is in entirety is I, i totally think. agree with your what what you just said i totally agree with it right yeah so seema ma'am what's your take on this Yes I think I would agree with Mahua she has beautifully you know explained this whole thing and I would just like to add a few more things that feelings are just one component or mm-hmm. one aspect of your total personality you know True. an individual is much more complex much Absolutely. more intricate and there are so many ingredients or so many facets of one's personality Uh, feelings are just a small part of that absolutely right there are so many other things there is much more to a person uh, like you know intellect reason physical attributes psychological states different psychological states and your world vision your exactly. point of view on things so there are so many things that uh, complete your personality and uh, feelings can just be considered as a part of it but a very important and vital part of one's personality right. Right. no doubt about it but feelings are something you have and not what you are they cannot define you absolutely absolutely 
Okay. So, you know, you guys have been writing poetry and poetry is your life. Absolutely. You consider it as a life. Absolutely. So, now I would like to know what is poetry to you. Okay. So, okay. see my ma'am first. Okay. All right. Well, I think poetry means different things to different people. And there are poets and writers who have defined poetry in various ways. Like for Wordsworth, poetry is a spontaneous overflow mm -hmm. of powerful feelings. Mm -hmm. And Keats said, poetry comes to a poet as leaves come to a tree. There is a well-known novelist, D.H. Lawrence, who said that an artist sheds his sickness in his works. So it is an expression of what is there inside you, what troubles you and ails you. And uh, there is another poet, Arnold, Matthew Arnold, who I said, poetry is criticism of life. So if you ask me, my take on this is that poetry is, to my mind, life itself. It Absolutely. includes every gamut of life, every part of life. It is life as seen and experienced by the poet. It is an expression of the amalgam of feelings, thoughts, experiences, and the worldview of the poet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is in totality, you know, uh, because poetry is as vital as life itself. Absolutely. Beautiful answer. Thank you. Thank Beautiful you. answer. Absolutely. So Mayo, Mahua, ma'am, what's your take on this? I, I think I already said poetry is synonymous with breathing for me. I think yes, the trajectory yeah. of my life, you know, uh, would be very different and much less interesting, I would say, without the works of uh, Rabindranath Tagore or Whitman or Shakespeare or Stevens, Rilke, Moore, so on and so forth. So uh, poetry is a kind of, uh, you know, internal exile for me, so to say. It soothes me, you know, it comforts me, it relaxes me. Um, it opens up many perspectives, you know. And uh, it is through poetry that I get a better understanding of myself and uh, even the world around me for that matter. And uh, through poetry, I think we can explore the spe spectrum of our emotions, what uh, they mean to us personally, and uh, how they dwell within the context of our, you know, external world. So poetry intricately allows us to um, uh, kind of embrace every experience and emotion, you know, gifting us the eloquence to, uh, to kind of define what we truly feel. I would so, like to add something uh, to okay. what Mahua said. Actually, you know, I feel that as far as your uh, poetry writing is concerned or reading of literature is concerned, I think it is an exclusive part of your personality. Absolutely. You know, it, is, it is something that is there 24 by 7 with you, you know, and right. you are, there is a part of you which is a way, there is a corner inside you or a part or part inside you uh, which where, where poetry lives all the time, breathes yes. all the time, yes. in, even in the middle of mundane things of life, I can you know, at the back of mind somewhere, yeah. you know, a poem is getting born or shaped, you know, even yeah. in the midst of uh, uh, the, the hello blue of life, you know. Yes, yes. So uh, it I, is I'm always there. I completely, you know, uh, relate. I think all poets exactly. can relate to it because they experience I, it. Themselves. I know, you know, po poetry keeps brewing behind yes. my mind's yeah. uh, even, even when I'm tending yeah. to my child or exactly. When you know, when you are ridiculous. boiling milk in the kitchen, or when you are attending to your child, <laughs> or and in every situation around you, you know, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, at the back of your mind somewhere, you know, a poem is, uh, poetry is alive. True, yeah. true. So it's an all-encompassing experience. <laughs> right now, I'm beaming with joy, you know, listening to you guys, it's kind of amazing. Yeah, you know, that nostalgia feeling of poetry. It's your humility, Jotsna. You know, yeah, you I'm, are doing so well yourself, you know, you are anchoring it so beautifully. So, thank you. And, yeah. you know, you inspired me to read more poems. You know, I just only yeah, need to, but I'm feeling yes. like I need to start reading more poems. Yeah. I think reading poetry and literature, it enriches you so much. It yeah. unfolds so many different dimensions of Absolutely. life before you. Uh, it is a kind I'm of exploration of your own self and life. True, true. Absolutely. Okay. So my next question. Mm -hmm. Can we disconnect 
poetry and feelings okay <laughs> let's suppose poetry doesn't exist at all so how would people define their feelings mama ma um i think if uh, poetry does not involve your emotions it is just a group of words that rhyme or do not rhyme for that matter and uh, a good poetry demands you to feel the emotions that you are writing about or even reading about as they say poetry is a continuous uh, you know overflow of emotions it's a it's a language of the heart and uh, when you write poetry it is a reflection of uh, you know what is happening inside of you or what's happening uh, you know in your subconscious so this again raises a question that can a good writer you know write about emotions uh, without ever experiencing it directly so i would say yes of course but uh, you know one has to uh, empathize to that situation or emotion and uh, if you ask me in my experience you know uh, feelings can be better expressed through poetry as if you know it's like having a conversation with myself and yeah, with reader of course so not only poetry but prose or uh, or any other work of art for that, for example so yes good poetry invokes myriad emotions emotions or feelings and uh, you know and poetry go and uh, poetry and emotions or feelings they go hand in hand they can never ever be detached. never never you cannot disconnect yeah, yeah. and uh, yes everyone has their own ways to communicate their feelings there has to be one way right and i feel like if poetry is all about rhyming words so then it feels drab you know no one would like no, to read no it's not yeah. all about rhyming words it's not about no about i rhyme. i i am just saying that if poetry is rhyming yes. it's about yes. rhyming it will become then so yeah so see ma'am ma what's your take on this okay uh, actually i would like to start in a different way because okay. you know uh, for many people poetry is not all about feelings there have been literary critics and poets who have tried to say that poetry is not all about emotions you know whether i agree with them or not that is a separate matter i'll come to that uh, for example there is an english uh, poet and critic t s eliot right he said, criticized william yes, wordsworth and he yeah. said poetry is not a turning loose of emotions it's an escape from emotions escape from emotions right and then there are poets like dryden john dryden and alexander pope alexander pope and dryden they laid more emphasis on the style and the presentation of uh, ideas rather than on emotions and uh, pope in one of his couplets said that you know he says true wit to nature uh, uh, true wit is nature to advantage dressed what oft was thought but never so well expressed right so for them expression the way you express it is more important feelings and emotions are not that important you know okay. but to my mind feelings are very essential and vital to poetry i somehow fail to subscribe to that view where <laughs> expression and uh, uh, escape from emotions they are the crux of poetry i do not agree with that view and to my mind feelings are very very vital and essential to writing poetry uh, if i can use an analogy i would like to say that in the absence of feelings a poem is like a well decked mannequin Absolutely. without life or soul you know right yes thank you seema ma'am such a good thought yeah okay. okay so if we're talking about feelings and we just said that poetry is all about feelings so my question arises that uh, the why do people say poetry helps us to vent our feelings it's every time every time i go to you know come a comes uh, and you know meet some pe- person or something and then they feel like he poetry it's all about feeling if you want to let out just write poetry if you want to let out your feelings just write poetry. even a pen down a story a poem or a short story why why so mom ma'am um well this reminds me of aristotle uh, who wrote in poetics uh, that you know uh, he discusses the process of creativity and its relationship with emotional state and um, he coined uh, the term catharsis uh, which means giving a vent to one's emotions so uh, catharsis has been associated with cr- uh, creativity 
human emotions, you know, for a long time. And uh, writing, I think, articles, features, short stories, as you said right now, or novels or poetry, you know, anything, I mean, you name it, are different means to vent your emotions in a cathartic manner. So yes, I absolutely agree with this. Yeah, Seema ma'am. Okay. Well, I think we all experience strong emotions intensely at times. Mm -hmm. And uh, poetry is a great medium to give vent to our feelings and emotions. Uh, and as Mahua said, I absolutely agree with it. Uh, in the words of Aristotle, uh, poetry or art is cathartic in nature. Though cathartic is a term taken from medical science, you know, which releases something. So mm -hmm. it is uh, basically it releases your pent up emotions. It gives okay. vent to them. Right. But then everybody is not a poet. And mm -hmm. there are so many other forms of art which exactly. can also help you in expressing yourself. They, it may be music, it may be painting, it may be dance, it may be writing short stories, etc. It may be drama or to, for that matter, even diary writing. I yeah, think it's a good exactly. way of giving vent to your feelings. Your feelings. Yes. So if you do not think you can write poetically, perhaps you can give vent to what is inside you in the form of diary writing. So there are different ways to express yourself, uh, our different feelings in, in different ways. But uh, I believe that uh, poetry is a very powerful medium to give vent to your feelings. True. If you can poetically express your feelings, I think uh, it's not only a vent to your feelings, but in, a, in, a, in an artistic way, you are expressing the feelings uh, in a general way. The feelings which connect with everybody, which everybody can relate to, everybody can connect with. So there is a universalized eye in a poet, you know, which gives vent to feelings, not only personal, but generalized and universalized. At some mm -hmm. level, everybody can connect with that. And, mm -hmm. uh, and as far as the best poetry is written, uh, best poetry is concerned, it is generally believed that uh, the saddest emotions or feelings, they are best expressed in poetry. You know, as Shelley said so beautifully, our yeah. sweetest songs are those that tell of sadness. <laughs> so when you are sad and when you are in a depressed mood or when you are, uh, you know, full of uh, something pestering you, I think poetry is a great medium of catharsis. Yeah. Thank you. True. Oh, amazing answer. Thank you so much, Sima, ma'am. Okay. You. So my last question to you. Should a poet be who he or she wants to be? or what society expects them to be? Okay, so Mahua ma'am. That's a very good question. That's actually, I also feel it's a very good very question. Good question. Yeah. And uh, I would uh, emphatically say that a poet should write what you know he or she wants to or needs to. I say need here because many a times as we uh, right now discussed, a work of art is an outburst of emotions you know, a quintessential outburst that cannot be kind of contained within, you know. So when we write what uh, kind of organically comes to our mind, only then I feel uh, we can be true to ourselves or to our art. But, uh, you know, having said that, I want to add that poetry or any form of art plays a very crucial role in shaping and, uh, you know, renewing culture or society. Right. You know, so we as a poet have uh, a responsibility towards our society, right? So our work can shine a spotlight on truth and uh, uh, it can create moments of joy or, you know, even inspire people to act. So in times like these, especially, we need to empower artists like never before to help people reflect or to rekindle, you know, people's hope and uh, to re firm about uh, you know better future better times so yes our work should you know kind of strive to bring about a positive change in the society and uh, we must remember that uh, you know whenever we are uh, you know uh, we give a bent to our emotions through writing as we've discussed right now public. Your voice, yeah okay right so I was saying as uh, 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 we must remember that whenever we give a kind of vent to our emotions, when we write, we, we communicate with the public, right? I'm right. not talking about the personal journals though. So yes. Thank you, Mungo ma'am. So Sino ma'am, what's your take on this? Yes, this is a question 
uh, about which I would like to answer in detail. Okay. Because there is so much I would like to say about it. You know, first of all, I feel that poets, they are the conscience keepers of society. Absolutely. They are the moral custodians of society. So they should be what they are and not what society expects them to be. True. Right? Because it is the onus to give voice to the collective conscience of society. It is upon the poet. True. Right? They can feel the pulse of society. They can diagnose what ails it in, in a variety of ways, you know, at many dimensions. It may be political, it may be cultural, as Mahua said, it may be social, it may be a crisis of values. The, the onus to give right direction to society, it is on the poets. Absolutely. And here I'm reminded of uh, some of the well-known poets and what they have to say about the responsibility and role of poets. You know, Pablo Neruda said, you can cut all the flowers, but you cannot stop spring from coming. True. Right. So having that kind of courage to say this, you know, uh, yeah. this, this uh, only a poet can do that. And uh, similarly, I'm reminded of uh, Sahir Ludhyanvi, the great Indian poet who wrote that famous uh, nazm of his, Wo subha kabhi to aegi. Aegi. No? Wo subha kabhi to aegi. So in that uh, poem, uh, Sahir Luthian B talks about what is wrong with society. And he hopes for a new dawn to emerge. Exactly. And all the ills of our systems, you know, they will be not there. The dark night of uh, exploitation, suffering, misery, injustice, all uh, of those things that will be over. So pinpointing what is wrong with society. Mm -hmm. And like that, you know, another poet, Dushyant, he said, these beautiful lines I always, you know, really appreciate. Ho gai hai peer parvat si, pighal ni chahiye. Ho gai hai peer parvat si, pighal ni chahiye. Is himale se koi ganga nikal ni chahiye. Tere sine me jale ya mere sine me jale. Ho kahi bhi aag lekin aag jal ni chahiye. So basically, I believe that, you know, poets, they show the mirror to society. Absolutely. And uh, the, um, you know, excessive regimes, they have always been intolerant of poets because they have been pointing their finger at what is wrong with political and social systems. Mm -hmm. You know, so the, if the poet uh, ceases to be what he or she is, and if he becomes what the society expects him or her to be, then the very force of poetry will be lost. Exactly. The very reformative zeal of poetry will be lost. And here I'm also reminded of uh, that uh, those words by Faz Ahmed Faz, upholding the freedom of expression when he says, Bol ke lab azad hai tere. Bol zuba ab tak teri hai. So, you know, poets like uh, Faz and other all, all, all these other radical poets, revolutionary poets, they have contributed so much, much. in recreating a a better social order. Well, yes. So if they become what society expects them to be, then all of that will not be possible. Mm -hmm. And we will continue to live with the with all the ills of our system. So that's very Thank important you. for a poet to be what he or she is. Absolutely. Thank you. Beautifully said. Thank you, Thank you so much, Seema, ma'am. You both beaut beautifully said, and you explain very well, you know, whatever I just asked, the questions and the poems you just beautifully illustrated you know my mind was the images and stuff it's all came into my mind while you were reciting your poetry and you were answering the questions it was really amazing thank you josna you are so thank generous you. in your yeah, words of praise yeah, you're very kind and generous thank yeah. you yeah. And I, I feel feels you know so touched today you know, I really like it. You know, strong women power today. It's a, it's a pleasure for us to be here with you. Absolutely. And uh, with being with Mahua, it is uh, an absolute delight. You know, she is one of my favorite poets. You know, she writes so beautifully. I Thank always admire you. her poetry. I'm to hear, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. So uh, thank you so much, Mahua Sen ma'am and Seema ma'am for joining us today. And, you know, just portraying your passion for poetry and 
get i am hoping that people get inspired from you and start reading poetry more and you know every and they appreciate more and more people to write poetry and they also start writing so we need people like you in our society so that you know you you can inculcate the knowledge of literature and the literature art and yeah, thank you so much to, if listening to us can inspire people to read more and more of poetry i think the purpose will be accomplished i'll yes. be so happy because if, you know if we can inspire even one person to read yes. poetry and write it will yeah. i mean our it you know be great it will be a blessing for us and i really emphatically believe that poetry can make the world a better place definitely thank you so much yeah yeah, yeah it's i love said no oh, i was just about to say that it can sow up you know seed of compassion that uh, you know germinates beautiful flowers that's what i believe lovely when yes. i talk about poetry yes it can sow the seeds of compassion it can sow the seeds of empathy love. it can love. sow the seeds of love kindness uh, you know beauty and also change and reform so all these are possible through poetry the way we perceive things changes that's what i believe okay so thank you so much it was lovely session with you